Wow, what a beautiful fish. The birds are flying, the trees are turning. It's fall here in the parklands region of Southwest Manitoba. And on today's show, I'm gonna show you how to use balanced flies to catch trout just like this beautiful brown. Stick around, it's gonna be a great show. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to On today's show, the new fly fisher is coming to you from the Parklands region of southwest Manitoba. We will be visiting some of the various lakes that are centrally served by the Russell Inn, including Twin, West Goose, Purse, and Patterson. All of the lakes located within this region are an easy drive from the Russell Inn, often less than an hour. The Russell Inn is the Stillwater hub of the Parklands region, offering a wide array of amenities including accommodation, food, coffee shop, gas, fishing licenses, and a convenience store. Balance flies are the focus of today's show. The balance fly concept was originated by my friend Jerry McBride from Spokane, Washington. Realizing that traditional flies suspended under an indicator hung vertically, Jerry creatively developed a pattern solution to better match the natural horizontal travel path used by the majority of Stillwater food sources. Today, I use Jerry's balance fly concept to imitate a wide variety of prey including leeches, minnows, dragon nymphs, damsel nymphs, and scuds. Either suspended under an indicator or cast and retrieve without an indicator, Jerry's balance fly concept has had a huge impact on my still water presentations. Of the two methods I'm gonna show you today using balance flies, strike indicator techniques are arguably the most popular and most well-known. These methods work very well when fish are not in an aggressive mood, not willing to chase the fly over a great distance, and working shallow areas over weed beds, or of course, in skinny water. The rod setup is simple. I like long rods, nine and a half foot minimum. These facilitate more open loops, reduced tangles, cushion strikes from aggressive pull downs, and help you steer and control fish around anchor ropes and things like that during the fight when it nears the boat. From a line perspective, any floating line will work, but if you can, choose one with an aggressive front taper, such as for nymphing or throwing big streamers, those kind of things, that line configuration is gonna help turn over multiple flies and that weighted balance flies. The leader systems are simple. Really, the only thing you need to really consider is make sure you have thin diameter tippet from your indicator to your flies. This facilitates a fast sink rate, a true straight down sink, so you know your flies are working at the right depth. In fact, many seasoned still water fly fishers use only leaders made up of level sections of tippet for their leaders. There we go. Fish on. On the indicator, we're in shallow. Perfect situation for fishing balance flies under an indicator. We can control our depth and our retrieve with an indicator. Of course, the, where you set the indicator affects the depth and how you move the fly back to you, whether you let it just sit and hang or whether you hand twist it or strip it back with pauses. 
pitches and moves that fly. Well, often you have to experiment. Quite often, my favorite retrieve is kind of a blend of all three. Cast it out and let it sit. Feel the need to move it, so I give it a strip. Nothing happens, I let it sit. Maybe a hand twist to cover some water. Let it sit and just keep that very variation going throughout. I'm gonna make sure when I bring a fish in within the radius of the rod around the boat that he's worn out enough that he's not gonna accidentally bolt and wrap himself around an electric motor, a transducer, or an anchor rope, something like that, and lose the fish of a lifetime. So don't be in a rush to horse fish in. There we go, right in the basket. What a beautiful fish. Huh. Look at the belly on this thing, look at the... The sides, that is one well-fed rainbow. Beautiful fish, balance flies. Indicators, cast and retrieve. Doing here is, seems a little strange. We've got a unique current situation here. Using the balance flies about six feet down, we're in seven or eight feet of water. I want to be a couple feet off the bottom. The bottom's irregular because it's a weedy bottom. And I'm using bigger flies, um, balance leeches, balance minnows, those kind of things. And I feel a fish will, oh, fish on. I feel that a fish will move more for a bigger food item. And this unique current is actually, although the wind's behind us, we've got the anchors trailing back, good purchase and keeps the fish away from the anchor ropes. Long rod, steer that around. Just keep that away from the anchor ropes, try and bring the fish around to the downwind side here where it's clear of clutter and I can land the fish. But this current is actually moving the flies upwind. There's an undertow of sorts that's moving the flies up so we're just making our cast, and I'm doing little mends, little flicks of the rod, just to always keep tight to the fly. And the fish seem to be relating to the current that's coming out between this gap between the two islands. Nice little rainbow's got that balanced bruise leech right in his face, wow. What a beautiful fish. These Parklands rainbows are feisty, plump, well-fed and balance flies, spring, summer, and fall. I'm just gonna grab this fly and have a fish rather and have a look. Look at that beautiful fish, fat, plump, healthy. Let's let him go and come back next year, stay at the Russell Inn, and catch him when he's bigger. Balance flies, excellent presentation option when you fly fish in lakes. So just what's so special about balance flies such as my bruise leech? At a first glance, they look like any other beadhead pattern. But the trick to this fly is in the hook itself. It's the chassis underneath the fly that matters. You start with either 60 or 90 degree jig hooks. You could certainly tie on a down eye hook, but you run the risk of burying the hook eye within the body of the fly. The 60 or 90 degree hooks allow you to have the hook eye sticking up above your body and you can simply tie your fly on. In the hook manufacturer I like to use, the 90 degree jig hooks only come down to a number eight. So I use the 90 degrees for size eight and larger. I use the 60 degree jig hooks for size 10 and smaller. So once you've got the hooks all figured out, the next step in this process is the extension itself. And that's simply made up of a common straight pin cut to length or the smaller length sequin pins. Onto these, I slide on a tungsten bead, 7 64 1 8 whatever colors you'd like. This, con this combination lashed onto the hook out in front of the hook eye tips or balances the fly because it offsets or equals mass of the bend, okay? So how does this look in, in the end? Well, once you've got these lashed on, you would build a bunch of these chassis. Here's one on a 60 degree bend. Here's one on a 90. The pin is here. The tungsten bead pushed out in front and secured in place lashed onto the shank, usually about two bead widths out in front of the eye is a good starting point. You can do test balances by hanging a piece of wire or monofilament through the eye to make sure it's balanced, and away you go. And again, this extension offsets the mass 
of the bend here. And that's quite simply it. That is the magic to balance flies, an absolutely deadly pattern style, and you want to make sure you have a good representation within your Stillwater fly box. Nice jump. So we're about six feet down, we're about eight feet of water. Usually I like to set the, the flies because we're over a weedy bottom, about two feet deeper, uh, sorry, two feet higher than the water is deep on the sounder. Oh, nice jump, nice jump. And we've got your leader set up, needs to be the thin diameter tippet between the indicator and flies to get that straight down sink. This one looks like he's ready to come in. And these balanced flies under indicators is just a deadly method, particularly in the shallows here. You can control your depth and your retrieve speed, two of the most critical elements in still water fly fishing, depth and retrieve speed, because you can let it sit, you can slowly hand twist it back, you can drift it like I'm doing here. We've got just enough ch chop that animates the fly. Nice little rainbow here. Nice park lens rainbow. Oh, good jumps. We've got our anchors trailing out of the way here. This one's behind the boat a bit, but that got to follow it around. Use the long rod. Long rods are a real advantage in still water fishing, particularly with indicators. You get a longer set depth without having to adjust and the ability to steer and control the fish around. Nice rainbow, nice parklands rainbow. These fish here are just unbelievable. These lakes are so rich and productive, full of all the key food sources. So balanced flies, they're not just for lakes, they're great river patterns, and they're not just for trout. You can catch bass with balanced flies, walleye, carp, Hand fish, whatever you want to chase with the fly, balance flies are the way to go. So make sure you always have a good selection in your fly box, no matter what you're chasing. What a beautiful rainbow. There we go. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. So balance flies, make sure they're in your fly box. They work wonderfully. Whether you're fly fishing here in the parklands region of southwest Manitoba, or any lake across North America for that matter, you're probably going to need access to watercraft. That could be a pontoon boat, float tube, small pram, or a big boat like I have here. In addition to your basic safety equipment, I'd like to walk you around my boat, show you some of the features I've incorporated. Perhaps you can use them into your watercraft as well and make your day on the water just that much more enjoyable. First of all, I love to fish in an anchored position. Find it comfortable, relaxing, great control of my presentations. You need anchor systems. And on this big boat, we need fore and aft anchor systems. This is a removal anchor system. It slides into the bracket here. I put the pin in, it's locked in place. It's extended, so the anchor, when I'm moving from point A to point B, it's not gonna clang and bang and accidentally hit the bow. It's got a nice cleat in here, so when I get the anchor in position, I just lock it in. It's gonna hold, I don't have to lose time or patience struggling to tie it off somewhere. As I move to the upper deck, I've carpeted it, indoor, outdoor carpeting. This muffles the sound and it protects your fly lines and things like that. If you drop them, you're not gonna step on them and grind them into the aluminum. So let's talk about the midsection. Not a lot here, but I've got two removable seats. So you can sit up in the center section in comfort if you perhaps don't wanna sit up in the bow section. And I've got carpet down here, again, muffles noise, protects fly lines from standing on them, and this carpet's removable. So if it gets dirty, muddy, I could just remove the seats, pick the carpet up, take it out, give it a shake, hose it off, or conceivably you could leave it in there and just give it a quick vacuum. It just depends on how dirty it is. So here we are at the stern of the boat. There's a lot of things going on here. I wanna show you some of the features. I've got a carpeted upper deck, again, for noise reduction. Uh, re reducing the risk of grinding your fly line if it accidentally gets underfoot. Using stainless steel screws, I've bolted down a, um, or screwed down a, a yardstick. I can use this to measure fish, leaders, anytime I need a ruler for anything. I've used some three quarter inch plywood, put a rubber coating on it. This covers the uh, open area here at the back underneath. I've got my starting battery, my outboard motor uh, gas tank, and two batteries uh, for my electric motor. Most of the trout lakes tend to be small, so an electric motor is a constant companion. 
I've got a 55 pound thrust motor. I recommend getting the biggest, powerfulest motor you can. Uh, wind, you got numbers of people in there. 55 pound is as big as you can go in a 12 volt system. It's bolted to the stern. I've got some carpeting down here simply to protect the boat. Not all of the lakes I fly fish are small, and nor do I chase trout all the time. I love chasing walleye, pike, other species on the fly. A lot of times they're in big lakes. A big economical four stroke like this helps me get around. If the wind gets up and safety's an issue, I can get off the water quickly. So let's talk about my rear anchor system, my electronics. First of all, electronics, got my sounder head installed. So it's out of the way of fly lines, connected to my power source, which is my battery underneath my uh, cover, and then the transducer cable. I'm using uh, a unique um, transducer mount that is magnetic, earth magnet. So I don't have to drill holes below the water line. And it just simply, I tuck it up out of the way when I'm towing and I turn the wing nut, drop it down. So the sounder, um, the, sorry, the transducer is just below the water line of the boat. So I get a good reading, but it's not sticking way down. So if I run with the big motor, I'm making a rooster tail. The rear anchor system is a removable anchor lock. It just clicks in. It's got a dog system. I can raise this anchor one handed if I have to, should a fish get near the anchor rope, I'm worried about losing that monster to the anchor rope. I can just pull it up out of the way. And when I'm lowering it, it, it'll just drop down, lock into position. I don't, again, I don't have to tie the anchor off. I move around with my anchors deployed for quick and easy anchoring. And at the end of the day, remove the, uh, the mount itself, stow it away, off we go. Day is done, anchors are put away neat and tidy. So there's my boat. It's clean, it's efficient. Not a lot of things for fly lines to catch onto. It works very well for me. Hopefully you can use some of these to adapt to your watercraft, some of these ideas to adapt to your watercraft for a more enjoyable time on the water. Just anchored up here. I've got a nice bed of toolies that the fish should be cruising in front of and along. I've anchored the boat with the wind at my back, the anchor ropes trailing out behind for a good purchase. And of course, when we catch a fish, always an optimist, um, that fish is going to be hopefully battled out here and not going to get into the rope. So that's what we want to do. We're just going to cast towards the tulies. We're in about six feet of water going into probably five feet. So I've chosen a floating line, 12 foot leader, single balanced fly, in this case a balanced leech, not two flies because we're shallow. Two flies sink faster than one and there's weeds in there. So when I hook a fish or if we hook a fish, there's a risk that second fly hanging up and breaking off the potential trophy. That's the plan, that's the strategy. So let's give it a try. There we go, right at the boat. I was just about to consider raising the rod up to hang, just a slow rod raise to induce a take at the end of the retrieve, and he whacked it a millisecond before I thought to do it. This, well, this is dogging down, it's a brown trout, I think. And we're, oh yeah, it's a nice, nice brown trout. So we're just using these balanced leeches with a floating line. I'm in about six feet of water, casting towards uh, the cattails along the shoreline. The, Fish at this time of the year, that's the, that's the supermarket. That's where the food are, and balanced flies are an excellent choice, especially cast and retrieve. Looks to be a female, nice fat female. Of course, the males at this time of the year are beautifully colored as well. She's got that balanced leech right in the snout. Balanced leeches, balanced minnows, balanced damsels, balanced scuds, all creatures of the shallows, and just the kind of fodder these Beautiful fish are starting to chop feet up on, so I can probably just grab the leader here. Take one last admiring look. Look at the colors on that fish. Wow. Parklands region of southwest Manitoba. Unbelievable public stillwater fisheries here. All season long. Just a great place. And balance flies are the way to go. Wow. I'm going to keep doing that all afternoon, I think. The Parklands region offers a beautiful setting to cast a fly. It seems there's always something spectacular to look at between fish. In addition, from a tactical perspective, 
it's important to maintain a constant watch for moving fish so you can react to them. Both of these actions, however, take your eyes off the indicator. It is as though fish have periscope vision and know to pounce at that exact moment when you aren't watching your indicator. Fortunately, a trout ate my balanced leech with such gusto that I was able to react in time. Looks like a good fish. I turned my eyes away just for a second. Noticed my indicator wasn't under and decided, well, I better raise my rod. This is my reward. It's like a, not quite sure, oh, it's like a nice rainbow. Beautiful fish. These balanced flies, if you ever have the chance to meet Jerry McBride, be sure to thank him for this balanced fly philosophy. It, is a, it has had a big impact on how I tie flies and how I present them in still waters. This is what the park lens is all about, balanced flies, whether you use them under an indicator or cast and retrieve, a pretty tough method to beat. And it's not only for trout, it's not only for lakes, Rivers and streams, bass, panfish, you name it, you can catch on a balanced fly. What's that for a rainbow? Balanced flies, lakes, rivers, streams, beautiful trout like this rainbow, bass, panfish, walleye, carp. It's a great method, they're great flies. I hope you've enjoyed today's show. I hope you've learned a lot. For more information on this episode and others in our informative series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com, check us out on Facebook, and watch past episodes and tips on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Wow. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to 